let's just bring it all together. Um, so when we look at our asset allocation process, what we're trying to do is find um, real risk-adjusted returns. And we don't want to take risk uh, unnecessarily, but we're looking for sufficient yield and return uh, to grow our assets, our investors' assets over the long term. So Sean mentioned and he talked about equities. We're finding good opportunities in the equity space, uh, globally uh, and domestically, but just f finding few opportunities than we were maybe three or four years ago. And that's just you know, by virtue of the fact that, uh, uh, that you know, the overall asset, asset class has actually gone up a lot. Uh, we talked about property. We said we, we, we cautious on property. Um, so we, we're not finding any opportunities in property. We've got a very clear idea when we would like to be buying property companies. They're just not at these current levels. Um, we talked about bonds. Uh, we're still finding good opportunities in corporate bonds. Um, fixed income, um, you know, sort of government bonds, we don't, we're not finding any opportunities. Um, we don't have any government bonds in, in, in our funds. And it's a very simple example, and this is a, another example of a global anomaly. We'd rather be invi in investing in IBM, which is yielding 11%, 2.5% dividend yield plus 9% buyback yield. We'd rather be investing in IBM at 11% than a government bond in the US over 10 years at 2.5%. And it's interesting if you actually look at the cost of insuring, um, and, um, and there's, there's a market where you can actually insure bonds, you can actually insure against the probability of default. There's not a big difference between insuring a, an IBM bond and a US government bond in terms of a treasury. So the actual the, the cost of insurance is quite similar. The market is seeing them as, as similarly risky uh, or, or low risk. One is yielding 11%, one's yielding 2.5%. Now, that's a nominee that we'd love to exploit. So we don't own any government bonds, but we own high-quality corporate, uh, corporate, uh, uh, corporate debt and high-quality uh, equities. So when we bring it all together, um, we, we're still finding good opportunities, but fewer than we were. So we're riding, riding with um, larger cash balances uh, than we were maybe you know, two to three years ago. But the good news is that that cash is starting to yield more than it was two years ago. And we're starting to get a bit a better yield, re um, you know, long-term return yield, uh, real, re uh, real yield out of, out of cash. Um, if we look at you know, asset allocation process, um, the amount of cash that we hold will be a function on how much risk we don't want to take. We look at risk as, as overpaying for an asset in terms of when valuations are high, we think there's a risk that you will overpay, um, that you will lose capital in the future. We want to avoid that, so we'd rather sit in cash than pay too much for uh, an underlying security. And a good example of this in real time um, in terms of looking at an asset allocation model, this is our PSG Flexible Fund. It's a five and a half, six billion rand fund. It's been run by Jan Mouton since 2004. And, and this is a, a snapshot of um, that asset allocation in that fund. That fund typically invests in cash or equities. When we're finding lots of opportunities, we'll have low cash balances. When we're finding fewer opportunities, we'll have higher cash balances. So you look at the top chart there, um, the blue chart, uh, the blue line um, shows you the valuation of the market. That's the, the Janusbeck Stock Exchange. And you can see that, you know, Sean pointed this out earlier, the Janusbeck Stock Exchange valuation is at high levels. Um, if you look at the gold line below there, that's the valuation of the, the aggregate uh, holdings of the, of, the, of the PSG Flexible Fund. And that typically um, trades at a discount in terms of aggregate valuations in the market. So this is the, a good example of that quality anomaly where we're finding um, high quality companies trading at, at valuations lower than the market. Uh, the lower line, uh, the lower shaded bob is the cash balances, is the underlying cash balance in that fund. And you can see that you know, back in 2007, um, when the, the market valuation was very, very high, we had large cash balances. And as the market f uh, sold off during the great financial crisis, we used those cash balances to, to actually buy high quality assets when there was a lot of fear and uncertainty. Um, our cash balances at the moment are back um, where they were back in 2007. Now, it's not to say that we're thinking that the, the bear market is about to end. That's certainly not the case. As I said to you earlier, we're still finding good opportunities. We think the bull market will end when the companies that we own at 12 or 13 times are trading at 18 times. And that's something that we think could happen in the foreseeable future. But we're just finding few opportunities, so we'd rather be cautious um, in terms of how we allocate capital. In terms of our core range of funds, um, we've got a range across the whole risk spectrum. Ian talked about these funds. These are opportunity sets in the shorter duration assets, income, and, and money market funds, um, all the way up to global equities and global flexible fund. Um, these, these funds appear on, on most of the platforms. The one platform that it actually doesn't, uh, we're not well represented on is Alan Gray, 
there's a vote over, uh, taking place in terms of getting funds onto that platform. So if you'd like to see these funds on the Allen Gray platform, vote in a couple of weeks. I think it's some, sometime in October. All right, so bring, you know, bring it all together. Uh, PSG Asset Management, we think we've got a very, very simple value proposition. Uh, we've got an experienced team that's been, been around for many, many years. Um, we typically put risk first in terms of how we, we think about assets. We take a long-term view. We look for asymmetry. Um, we don't like to overpay for assets. But when we find good opportunities, we're going to be very, very bold about it. Um, and lastly, we think we've got a large opportunity set, which allows us to get the odds in our favor in terms of exploiting that quality anomaly I talked about. Thanks very much.